Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And it's Tuesday night, and you know what that means. It's time for the NXT Event Center. And here's the man that will bring you all that has happened on NXT, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Episode number... Um, 1,194 of the show, and this is February 6, 2024, 10, 36 p.m., what is going to be the last video of the day, obviously, uh, because um, NXT was over about half, over half an hour ago. It's the fallout from Vengeance Day, and uh, we're going to um, address what happened on NXT Vengeance Day, and it seems like... Um, Seems like we need some answers, and but we'll probably get more questions than answers in every situation. As you know, um, a lot of people have not recovered from the uh, situation that happened between The Rock and Cody Rhodes um, Friday night, and it seems like that's, it's going to spill on over. And and I I think uh, you know this this interest uh, situation will get more interesting by the day as we I think this coming Thursday will be the press conference at Las Vegas for WrestleMania 40, the WrestleMania kickoff. So hopefully people will behave themselves and not get in trouble. Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of angry people, you know, but they've all jumped at, everybody's been jumping to conclusions. That's the problem. I'm not jumping to conclu conclusions. But lots of, but like I said, there could be mind games being played around here and for once... I think, I think, for once, I think there's some mind games going on. Like I said, I have a feeling there's some mind games going on in that situation between Rock, Cody Rhodes, Paul, uh, um, Roman Reigns. There's mind games. Who's playing them? Who's playing who? We don't know. I'm, th I'm, thinking, I'm thinking something's going on. The old noggin there. The old medulla oblongata. <laughs> so... And for those of you, for those of all the wrestling fans who have threatened The Rock and threatened the Ava Reign, listen, if you, listen, the way you threatened the uh, Ava Reign and, you know, threatened the family, uh, threatened her family and all that, then something's wrong with your medulla oblongata. Yes, we all want to see Cody as champion. We all want to see him finish the story. Yes, but threatening someone else to do it is not the way to go. Never. I sit back and relax. That's why I said I, I, that's why I tweeted out on X. I respect The Rock. I respect Cody Rhodes. I respect all the male and female talent from the WWE, AEW. And when I made WWE, I made Raw SmackDown NXT, AEW, and Ring of Honor. You know, New Japan, CMML, Stardom, and all that. And I'm going to enjoy watching wrestling and enjoy, you know, and enjoy interacting with the wrestlers. And anybody's got a problem with that, well, up your nose with a rubber hose. Simple as that. Sim you know my feelings on... I go, Why can't we enjoy good things anymore of entertainment while, without complaining? I got one idiot on Reddit, Reddit who is complaining that Morgan's a villain. What? You you, you know, I'm try I'm going by Doc Stalker's storylines and that. And, and I'm trying to say that she's not exactly a villain. Is she is an anti-hero, basically, like the Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, that type of deal, you know, and who are like, oh, you're, oh, you're, you're defending because you, you're, you're toxic simps and all. Really? Really? You know, like, the internet screwed everyone's mind up. I'm like, I'm like, is this guy on, what, and some, some of the people are actually on crack, man, let me tell you. Like, we're not, listen, it's, it, we're just trying to, we're just trying to go by Doc Stalker storylines and how we play the game. Was it, it was it, you don't want us to pick Morgan as our fighter or else we become villains too? You d bunch of ling dings. There's lots of, lots of wing nuts out there, let me tell you. Yep, a bunch of wing nuts. <laughs> we, all, we all wing nuts. <laughs> oh, man, I can be a wing nut from time to time. So let's talk about what happened on NXT before... Uh, <laughs> What's that one with XTC? Yeah, I'm a wing nut. Look at me. I got a paper. I got a notebook over my head. Anyway, it's falling down. Anyways, um, 
Um, as you know, Booker T had some surgery done. He'll be out for a couple weeks, so Byron Saxon will be filling in for him, along with Vic Joseph. And then Carmelo Hayes tried to explain the first time against Trick Williams, but he gets up, grabs a chair, goes, not yet, walks away. Everybody's booing, everybody's booing him, chanting stuff at him and all that. That was crazy. Then uh, Braun Breaker and Barry Coleman decided to celebrate the uh, Dusty Cup winners, and then Braun Breaker invited Alicia Taylor, said being the voice, best voice ring announcer of NXT, announced them as a new champ. And then, and then uh, 2024 Dusty Cup winners, and they and then she calls them Wolf Dogs. He uh, Barry Coleman, dude, you're a lone wolf. And he's the son of a dog faced gremlin. Go with it. I'm telling you, trust me. Just go with the nickname. Trust me. Then, um, then as they were talking, you know, we're calling out the family. The challenge of an action when Nathan Frazier came up for their match against Malik Blade and Idris and Nofi. This matchup could have gone either way, but Axiom and Frazier ended up winning the matchup, but they were attacked by the Wolf Dogs after the matchup. But then the family arrives, and then Breaker and, Cor uh, and Corbin were like, wait, what, what, do you, what do you say? And then the family goes, you want these belts? Next week, you got it. So next week, the tag team titles will be on the line. The D'Angelo family with the lovely Adriana Rizzo in their in their corner. The go Adriana Rizzo in their corner. Go up against the team of Braun Breaker and Baron Cohen, who won the Dusty Cup. So there you go. So um, Kelly Kincaid interviewed Ilya Dragon Up. He says, "You know what? Now is not the time. I'll deal with it in the ring. I'm going to call out Car uh, Carmelo Hayes." Then he came out to address the uh, NXT Universe, calls out Carmelo Hayes, but Dijak interrupts Dragunov, saying, hey, look what I did, Joe Gacy, I deserve a shot at the title. And then Dragunov said, hey, not, now it's not time to mess with me, I'm calling out. But Dijak didn't care. He headbutted Dragunov, and these two started brawling, leading into a non-title match as the main event. Meanwhile, Thea Hale and J.C. Jane talked about the calendar, the success of the calendar, and they were talking about, you know, Thea Hale was well, then there was about, you know, Riley Osborne. He's in GC he goes, play it cool, play it cool, play it cool. Don't even get involved in the matchup. Don't even show up for the match. So, so Mr. Stone was talking to Vaughn Wagner, and Vaughn Wagner said, hey, you should team up with me, man. We got to take care of Metaphor. And then Mr. Stone I don't know. But his sons interrupted, Mr. Stone's sons interrupted him and convinced their father. And he goes, you know what, why not? Why not, why not only I'll team up? I mean, I gotta believe that Mr. Stone can go, seriously. Riley, o Riley Osborne went up one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, Lexus King, and Osborne had Duke Hudson and Andre Chase in his corner. Chase, she was back, and then she, he looked back to see if, if the hail was there. She was not. That distracted Osborne. Lexus King took advantage of it, hit the coronation. One, two, three. Lexus King wins the matchup. Keanu joined and cut a promo and is, deter is determined to... Uh, you know, get back in the top, uh, get back in the rankings of the women's division. Well, I'm in the women's locker room, Izzy Day and Keanu James were talking about the women's division and how much losers they are. And then Brindley Reese interrupts them. She was talking to the other girls. And then, you know what? I would feel like a drink. And then, goes, oh, I just have one for me. And Keanu James took the drink from Brindley Reese and, Reese and dumped it in the garbage, which will lead to a match next week between the two. Then, Carmelo Hayes tried again, and he explained why he turned against Rick Williams, and he basically said, I'm just using Williams. He basically said he used Rick Williams, and he's nothing he's nothing but my hype man, that's all he ever will be. Jerk, that's what I call Mr. Carmelo Hayes. Then, with the three, the man has three faces promo. Again, who is this guy? Who is it? Is it a guy? Is it a girl? Who knows? Who is it? Who's coming to NXT? Is it a mysterious figure that we don't know about? Hmm. Osborne was talking to Hale and Jane. I think Osborne asked to Hale to, to be his Valentine. She nodded her head yes, and he's like pumped up about it. And Jason Jane goes, "You know what? I'm going to help you out with your Valentine's Day date." With I think the last time a Valentine's Day date happened, I do believe Otis was turned down and Dolph Ziggler was taken over. Well. Otis has got um, Maxine Dupree now. You never know. Sure. Then Roxanne Perez took on Lola Vice one-on-one. -on -one, and uh, Taylor Pax Paxley tried to get involved in this matchup. Why? I don't know. She wants to make sure that either lady stays away from Lyra Valkyria. But 
In the end, Roxanne Perez did win the matchup. Kelly Kincaid interviews Meta 4, and it seems like no quarter catch crew. Um, especially Demon Chemist challenged Noam Dar for the Heritage Cup, and Noam Dar is like, nah, 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 nah. And meanwhile, Fallon Henley and Ren Sinclair took on last legend Jakara Jackson of Metaphor, and after a good matchup, Metaphor wins the matchup. Then Josh Briggs talks to uh, Dion Lennox in about you know the success of Fallon Henley. We got you know, we'll learn from, from that, and Josh Briggs, you know. And you're not, you're not. Brooks Jensen interrupts him. He says, hey, how you doing? I'm oh, doing pretty good. Hey, listen, I got you know, I have to admit something, man. I, I, I'm without you guys. I'm lost without you. And Josh Briggs tells him, you guys stand on your two feet, man. Grabs him by the shirt, pushes him in the locker room. I think Josh Briggs is may, probably going to end up making an enemy at, 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 uh, with Brooks Jensen if he's not very careful. Because I'll tell you one thing right now. If someone grabbed me by the shirt and said, you need to grow up, it's okay, okay, fine. Slap him across the face. That's what I would have done. I want to slap Josh Briggs across the face and you know what I want to grow up? I'll start with you. How's that? That's what I would have, I thought, that's what I would have done. That's what I would have done. Josh Briggs, I would have slapped him across the face because I'll start with you. Let me start from my own. You don't want to be my friend anymore? Fine. You and I, we can go one-on-one. -on -one. All bets are off. That's what I would say. So anyways, uh, Jada Parker tells, uh, talks to Ava about OTM, wanting the family. He said, listen, to tag team title match. And Ava goes, you, why not? So, anyways, um, Rich Holland wants Gallus by himself, and then Ava goes, it's not fair to you, but I'll tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you each of them one at a time to you. And Rich Holland goes, I'll, I'll take that. Then you got the main event, Ilya Dragunov versus Die Jack. Heck of a matchup this was. Da, uh, Dragunov ended up winning the non, non title match, but then Carmella Hayes attacks. Dragging off after the match the same way he attacked Trick Williams. And then Hayes will kind of go go for one last run at the NXT title before he heads over to either Raw or SmackDown. We'll find out for sure. He'll probably tie some loose ends up in NXT. I think mid-year, we'll probably see him on SmackDown for good. So that's all the time we have on this show. The NXT Vengeance Day Fallout edition of NXT is complete. Uh... That um, is all for 1,194 episodes. Tomorrow we're going to have the Joker's Wild. Once again, we're going to um, use the one on banners, our tag team partner against that rotten devil. What's going to happen? Who knows for sure. So until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lee Machinigans of 1977. A big beefy E, door for Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Bofa Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.